welcome to Fine Art Makers, the online edition. My name is Miss Shea, and I'm joined here today by Mr. Davey, um, and we're going to talk about an artist named Lionel Feininger. He's a German-American artist who was born in 1871 and lived until 1956. And he is basically a very creative person. He wrote music, he played violin, he uh, painted, he also drew comic strips uh, in his early career. He um, drew characters. Um, and also did work for comic strips for adults and children in, in the newspapers. Um, and he also, in later in his life, was a photographer. But for this session, we are going to talk about uh, his career as a expressionist. Uh, he did a lot of work in cubism. So uh, Mr. Davies is going to show you an example of that, and you guys are going to work along with him on your own piece of art. Uh, today, you'll need a piece of paper, a uh, black crayon or marker, and something like a rule or something with a straight edge, okay? Because we're gonna be making lots of sharp lines. All right, um, go find those things, hit pause button, and we'll see you when you come back. Hello everybody, it is me, Mr. Davey, and it's such a joy to see you guys again. Even though you're seeing me, I'm not seeing you. But today we are going to be doing some cubism um, based off of Lionel's work. And I was really struck with like the, the, the stark images um, of these two pieces, and that's what made me think it'd be really cool to just go back to basics with just a black marker. Um, now, I will be using a Sharpie, and also, regardless of the marker you're using, um, you're going to want to have a piece of paper, or not a piece of paper, a paper towel, um, to wipe off your edge between each um, line you make, just so you don't smear it, because markers tend to stay wet, they don't dry instantly, so if you're just wiping that, the edge of your ruler off, It'll make sure that you get a nice clean line that won't leave marks um, where you're trying to do other lines of artwork. So, Miche, uh, take it away, and I will continue my drawing here. Though, of course, I, just a little, you know, really quick, I did a quick sort of sketch of what I wanted, um, and now we're, I'm going to be using the ruler to make all my uh, lot, line, hard lines and then background and stuff like that, and I'll go back over with an eraser to kind of get rid of all the pencil marks that don't get covered up by the marker. All right, so um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're uh, talking about Lionel Feininger today. Um, he's a German-American artist, uh, once again, born in 1871, and he passed away in 1956. So he was alive um, during some of the best years of Expressionism, especially German Expressionism, which I think is kind of like the home of the Expressionism movement. Um, but he was born and he grew up in New York City, and when he was 16, he traveled to Germany um, to perfect his art. Um, he uh, was very uh, artistic, very talented. His father uh, played violin, um, and so he grew up playing music as well, but it wasn't what he wanted to do ultimately. Even though he's so creative, he wanted to make art. And his uh, original style that he did, he actually was a commercial characterist, and he also um, drew pictures in newspapers. So like you might see one of those one panel comics in a newspaper, um, also like comic strips. Uh, they looked a little different back then, um, but he had a very experimental drawing style, and he did magazines for kids and adults, something serious, some things funny, some things satire. Um, and that's kind of what he did in the beginning. Um, he did that for 20 years and was very successful. And, you know, he worked in Germany and France and back in America. Um, he worked for the Chicago Tribune, mainly. Um, and he drew two comic strips for the Tribune, and they liked it so much because it was funny. And the drawings were very, um, I say, experimental. They're kind of different, kind of abstract in a way, but still... Uh, people could appreciate that, um, and they were called, you know, breathtaking, um, just very unique for the time. And even after all that, he decided that when he was 36, um, he wanted to become, you know, quote-unquote, a fine artist. And he was a member of uh, several German expressionist groups, um, such as the Blue Four, and he helped found... Um, the group in Germany at the Bauhaus. Um, he actually helped found the Bauhaus itself, and he was actually the first uh, faculty professor uh, appointed at that uh, Bauhaus, and he became the master in charge of printmaking. So he was kind of talented in all sorts of different, uh, you know, types of arts and studies. 
looking at the kind of art we're talking about today in the program itself, Mr. Davies working on uh, a work of expressionism, cubism. And one of the best things about cubism is that it's kind of a different uh, interpretation of different objects. So you see the buildings here. Um, and a lot of cubist work, you're drawing the object as if you're seeing it different ways from different perspectives, different sides, all at the same time. Uh, so it can be uh, a lot to see and sometimes, you know, very tricky to uh, create art in that way because you want to think of every side of whatever it is that you're drawing. Um, now, Mr. Davey, I'll take a quick break. How are you doing? Do you find this to be difficult at all? I know I do personally, but... Um, no. Um, I'm, I, I like it because I was... I was able to do like a rough sketch and then go back and start doing my lines. And these are sort of like my basic lines because when I'm looking at his art, you can see how he has thicker lines, thinner lines. So I want to really try to emulate that as I start filling in my lines after I first trace the object. Then I'll go back and make some of the lines thicker, thin, or well, I can't make them thinner, but I mean, not all the lines are uniform, and that's what I like about it. So I'm basically, and that's why I'm also putting little gaps there to kind of look like what he's doing in his piece. And you know, when I do some, go back and do some shading, I'll add some just additional lines in there. So it's it's a definitely a un unique way of looking at things, um, sort of, sort of through his eyes. And just to uh, give some more examples, expressionism. We've had several different artists um, who were expressionists that we've. Uh, done episodes of FAM for um, specifically expressionist artists they sought to portray in their pieces of art um, emotions and subjective interpretations uh, so that kind of movement was kind of a reverse of the um, several years beforehand whereas the older artists used to create pictures landscapes things that looked very real and very beautiful, like beautiful flowers, kind of like Impressionists, like Monet, things like that. Um, whereas the Expressionists, uh, they wanted it to just kind of create emotional reactions um, with powerful colors, um, compositions that were done really well. And um, a lot of uh, Mr. Feininger's work does do that. Um, he's pretty interesting, just definitely because he has such a range of different type of art styles. Um, he even did photography. Uh, one of his sons became a major uh, photographer, uh, did covers for Life magazine. Um, definitely a talented family. And uh, so in kind of cubism, they wanted to present that piece uh, from different perspectives, kind of distorting it for an emotional effect. Maybe uh, you'd see different ideas um, just from the lines and the colors. Maybe uh, it might create a mood. Um, even some paintings, even though there's lots of color, uh, could be kind of dark colors, somber colors, colors that, you know, just look kind of um, maybe dark, shadowy, uh, could be nighttime, things that, you know, may not look like happy colors, but uh, it kind of creates a mood. And, you know, everyone interprets art differently. Um, and that's one of my favorite things about Impressionism, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Expressionist things, um, is that there's so much feeling in it. And, you know, there's so many different reactions that um, people can have upon seeing, you know, these works in a museum, for example. Um, and so kind of back to his career, um, when he started working, you know, after 20 years of magazines and decided, I'm going to be a painter, um, you know, he went, he did that work. He uh, also, um, when he went to Germany, he was in Germany, and uh, unfortunately this was around the time of World War II. Um, so when he, uh, a lot of his art that was there and on display exhibition, um, his wife, uh, in 1933, um, the Nazi party came to power and his wife was partly Jewish. So they decided it would be the safest to leave Germany. Um, and because of that, his art was declared to kind of be, uh, quote unquote, degenerate art. Um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't proper German art. It didn't reflect um, the, the ideals um, of the Nazi party, and he was able to uh, move back to the United States. And what's interesting is I had no idea about this. Um, he became a professor at Black Mountain College. Um, and if you're familiar with the mountains of North Carolina, uh, Black Mountain, which is uh, several miles, 
still not too many miles outside of Asheville um, in North Carolina. Um, that used to be um, Black Mountain College. It's no longer there, but there's a museum dedicated to it, and it's kind of an experimental college. It was one of the uh, first kind of liberal arts specialty colleges where a lot of your um, schoolwork was done around art. Um, the liberal arts, instead of just being kind of anything, was really, really focused on art. And there were um, several different artists there, um, some that we have gone over in previous uh, classes that, um, you know, learned from there. Um, and so it's kind of a, you should really look into it. Um, lots of different artists. Unfortunately, the college was only there for about 20 years or so. They ran out of money. It wasn't like a state kind of college, things like that. Um, but several, several um, great painters, um, especially ones during the, I'd say the, between the 40s, even to the 90s, 1990s and on. But yeah, that's where he ended up doing. And he also did photography, um, as I mentioned, for many years. Um, but he really didn't share those or put them in museums or anything like that. He kept them within his circle of friends. Um, but he was very talented. And he also, like, as I mentioned before, he played piano um, and he was a music composer. And there were several different shows, especially in New York, that used music that he had actually composed um, even many years after he had passed away. So how's it looking, Mr. Davy? It's looking pretty good. Is there anything else you want to tell us about um, Lionel? I think that's all I have for today. So which is your favorite piece up there? Well, I like all of them. Now the one that is on the lower right here, the one with the black ink, kind of like a um, print making, kind of print work is very interesting, mainly because uh, just the two different colors, you have the black and white, but you can see shadows and people, and it's very difficult, I think, to kind of break apart and make a picture with just that negative and positive space. I also really like the two um, pieces up here in the top right, um, really good examples of cubism, as you can kind of see, uh, similar to what Mr. Davies doing, a lot of those hard lines, um, you see squares, triangles, circles, and you can, you know, it doesn't look overly realistic, which is kind of the point, um, expressionist, you know, abstract art, things like that, but you can, you can tell, like you can see buildings, um, you can see the rooftops, uh, different towers, and yeah, um, Feininger did a lot of uh, pieces that were kind of about, you know, architecture, things like that. He has a series about bridges, um, and he's done uh, the same bridge in like different styles. One was in a cartoon style um, that he did initially to show how he was doing art, and then once he practiced more in Germany in the fine art, he had um, more, I'd say, complicated uh, type versions and paintings of that same bridge and it's it's really cool to look at um but yeah i'd say those are my favorites very cool um so um like always um right now we are doing uh fam in person at the harrisburg library so you can always sign up for those classes um and if there's ever an artist or a style you'd like to see us explore please uh you know let us know you can email us uh, put in the comments below the video because um, we're always looking for new artists to do. And um, also, please, if you make a piece of art, please post it on, on, underneath the um, the link or underneath the video as well. We love seeing all those different uh, pictures you guys create. And um, until next time, keep making art, everybody. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye. bye.